There's my little TB303. Um, I sold my first one in 1986 for 40 quid um, to buy some hash. And because uh, I couldn't think of anything it could be used for in 1986, it wasn't really in vogue. And then about three months later, I heard my first acid house record. Oh! So swore blind I'd have one back one day, and about five years later I bought one again and paid 600 quid for it, and there it is. What do they go for now? About a thousand, apparently. Uh, but I'll never sell it, I don't sell gear, all I do is buy gear, I never sell it, I've never sold anything in my life. Um, so there you go, that's that. It uses every so often, mainly used now for its sequencer, I don't use the internal sound on it much anymore, but it's got a really cool CV and gate output, which I send to my Korg Monopoly, which is beside it, which is a bit more capable in terms of what it can do. It's got four oscillators and a different filter. Same filter as on the Profit 5, actually. Um, and it's got more modulation possibilities. And it's kind of polyphonic, but in a kind of a primitive sort of way. And makes good screamy noises, good bass lines, and, and stuff like that. And also, you can use the CV and gate out on that, and that, to power that which is the dupe for A100, I'll have to go right back to fit it all in, there you go. Um, and that's, uh, there's 84 modules there, and I'll give you a little close up, just so you can see, there's the analog sequencer. And you've got like, seven oscillators, and you've got various mixers and waveform processors, and then you've got me filters down there, a couple of low pass filters, high pass, multi-modes, fixed filter bank, that's kind of nice. And Tons of envelope generators and stuff like that. I bought that off Tristan recently, actually. Bless his heart. He had a baby and needed the space. Um, I had a baby and bought a big synth. Because that's where my priorities lie. Um, and there you go. That's kind of good. There's me, there's me little, me little ghetto blaster. Um, what I mix on, which is... There you go. Um, it's one of my eBay... Oh, where is it? One of my recent eBay... Impulse purchases, Electroharmonic small stone, phaser, lovely, we like, made in Russia, um, ugly but serviceable, and there's my base, and there's my baby monitor, hello, um, computer, bit bored of computers at the moment to be honest, use it as a bit of a tool now, I used to make all my sounds on it, um, used to use a lot of digital soft synths and plugins and stuff, but mm, actually just a bit of a tool now, don't use it for making sounds anymore. Um, there's my controller that I use for twiddling plugins and stuff. And there's my fountain. There's me what actually sod it. There we go. Doesn't that make you want to go to the weed that looks Yeah, that's good for you though. There you go, isn't that lovely? Isn't that tacky. Even got plastic plants growing in it. There you go. And the lava lamp's going back on. There you go. Um, right, yeah, and there's a CD player, DAP machine, boring, boring, boring. Cheap old Behringer patch bays, boring. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Um, Focusrite, Mixed Master Platinum. Basically use that for the A to D converters. Um, sounds really good. Mix through it. You record things into the computer from it. Um, my one indulgence is the one bit of gear I ever bought brand new. Everything else is second hand. I've never been to a... The only time I ever went to a shop and bought something brand new was that. Um, just because it's... I couldn't find one second hand. Then that horrible... We've got the horrible Behringers underneath. Used only in emergencies. I pay 10 quid each for those and they're rubbish. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. But they fill up two spaces in the rack. Otherwise I'd have a hole there. So they're 20 quid's worth of blanking panel. Underneath, there's a zoom thing that Simon gave me. I still owe him 50 quid for that, which he can have when hell freeze is over. Um, it's absolute rubbish, but my old SPX90 delay unit blew up and uh, I needed something to do a cheap echo, so that's what I use. That's me delay unit for everything. MK70 underneath, had that for donkey's years. That comes with um, that. PGA 100 programmer, absolute piece of shit without it, but with it, really good synth. Um, you can rustle up sounds really quickly, and all those big floaty pads on uh, smoke glass and chrome, they're all come out of that because it's got like 
minute long envelope generators which do big swoopy things. Kurzweil K2000 used to be my main workhorse. Don't really use it much anymore. Um, just because it's been sort of it's been outmoded a little bit really, but I use it for the reverb in it, which I like. Um, effect drone, we've already seen that. That's my little pride and joy. Um, EMS vocoder paid a grand for that about 12 years ago. Um, it used to belong to Vince Clark. Um, who's Vince Clark? Anyone under 30 will be going, who the fuck's Vince Clark? But he was Erasure and Depeche Mode and Yazoo and all that lot. Anyway, it used to be his because I used to work in his studio and I bought it off him. Um, and it's lovely. It doesn't get used much these days, but occasionally comes out and does something amazing. Merv out of Eat Static tried to buy it off me, and so I had him killed. Um, there's my blue front flanger there, we've already seen, and my instant phaser and my spring reverb there. Already been there, sorry Tristan, I'm really sorry. There we go, Roland Dimension D, the real McCoy, for 20 quid. Yes. I look at every so often I look at that just I sit and stare at it for an evening it's a bit like a roaring fire feeling of warmth I get from picking up a Dimension D in brand new condition for 20 quid just keeps me going makes life worth living um, sorry Tris <laughs> and underneath a load of cheap old Behringer compressors which I picked up for 10 quid actually rather good and a drama that I got off Simon for doing more editing on a Spongle record um, and a Yamaha compressor that I think I bought out of the paper, can't remember. Doesn't get used much anyway. Um, and then, then the mixer that I got off, um, I bought off Butterfly Studios when they all went tits up. That was actually going to be, I was actually bought for Paul Jackson. Genetic no, voodoo days? people. That was going to be his advance that when he was. The one that was in the top studio. No, that was fuck, that one. This was brand new. And um, they bought that for Paul Jackson for his advance when he was about to sign to Dragonfly. And he never did, did he? No, I remember, yeah. Who did he sign to in the we end? We won't go into detail, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, they had this desk knocking around, and I bought it off them. And it's been my pride and joy. I love it. Um, brilliant. Sounds great. And uh, NS10 monitors that everyone in the world hates except me. Um, they sound fantastic. We love them. And they're really complimentary with that, um, which we love. Um, and I think that's it. Is there anything I forgot? Oh no, hold on. <laughs> Silly me. I've <coughs> got the toy box. Yes, you, you have been listening to a Pringles tube. Cheese snacks. There. Cheese snacks. Um. Hello. Echo singing. Nets. No rubbishy old sample percussion for me, so all real. Did, did all these feature on the last album then? Yeah, all the percussion sounds you hear. Never use percussion samples. This is where it all comes from. And I save stupid things like this. Zoe knows not to throw out hot chocolate tubs anymore. <laughs> there we go. She knows not to throw out hot chocolate tubs anymore. Whenever she's got a there we are, coconut chips, whenever she's got an old tin like that, she fills it with rice and gives it to me. I love this one. And so on. And, oh, another one, bigger one. So on, um, and that's what I do. I sit in here playing in my toy, bo toy box all night. Um, and 
that lives underneath there. Uh, yeah, never bothered the sampling percussion when you've got your own. I've got things like my Darbuka there, look. Bongos, they're on everything. And you probably can't, uh, I might be able to get it, might be able to reach it, uh, I can't, it's tucked around about. Anyway, lovely, Where is it? lovely wooden djembe, and I sat and watched oh, a bloke carve it out of a log at Glastonbury one year, <laughs> sitting, sitting in a yurt off my face, watching some bloke carving. This lovely djembe out of a tree and I watched him for about three hours, completely mesmerised, and he stretched the skin over it and did all the rope work and tuned it up. And um, so I sort of wandered over to him when he finished it, so it's really lovely, how much would it cost to buy that? And he went, oh, 75 pounds. And bloody hell, if I had 75 quid on me, I'd buy that off, it's lovely. You don't take visa, do you? And he reached down behind his pile of wood shavings in his yurt and pulled out an F-POS <laughs> machine. I mean, yeah, we do actually. <laughs> Oh, fuck. So what could I do? I couldn't... No, uh, actually, no, I don't think he's that good. So I bought it off him. And for one afternoon, I was one of those tossers walking around Glastonbury <laughs> with a djembe slung over my back.